We've made it, disc golfers, to the final nine coverage of the 2024 Chess.com Invitational presented by Discraft. My name is Chris German. We have Nathan Johnson one last time bringing you the action at the Olympus Disc Golf Course, Brooksville, Florida. And from what it seems, the feedback, pros love the course, the spectators love the course, the media teams love the course. It, this is truly an amazing property and very, very exciting to see this finish and see how Nathan, or not Nathan, sorry, Aaron finishes out here already five under. Yeah, we got we had some strong scores, some struggles from some players on the card, but the front nine is definitely the tougher nine, so hopefully these guys can turn it on on the back and grab some birdies here down the stretch. Hole 10 is the first one of those opportunities, a 341-foot par 3. Slightly downhill the entire way, super tight, low-ceiling tunnel. It's a very demanding hole. Whoa. Four on the next tee. back there that he has, I was about to say, is there OB back there he has to worry about? Not long, just the OB on the fence line, the property line on the right-hand side. But yeah, that is a good 100 feet just past everything. So uh, I have no idea what it's like back there. He might have a, a tricky little scramble coming up. Yes, Ian Gannon both catching some shrubs on the right and Kevin Kiefer really terrible kick actually I kind of kicked into the opening for him a little it looks like might have a lane well, the tomahawk action there out of Yesi gonna give himself a, a chance to save the par yeah, you can see Kevin kicked all the way down to the bottom of that hill not really a bad result as it kind of just leaves him a nice open hyzer into the green. Long bid there from Gannon. A little scary. You can definitely catch that koozie or the basket and roll down the hill as Aaron had a nice little hyzer there. So not too much danger. Oh, he liked it out of the hand. Just comes up a tad short on the par save. Thorn. Surprisingly, hole 10 played as the third hardest hole on the course for round three. So, I mean, obviously you can see why not an easy birdie, but uh, quite a few bogeys from the field there. Jumping into hole 11, 494. One foot par four landing zone off the tee. You gotta get yourself into the corner so you can play up the hill and into this tight green. Bunch of different options to play off the tee. I think we'll see probably most of these guys opt for that flex forehand line. Plenty of space off to the right to fade out and uh, put yourself in a good position. And then getting there with the backhand. Kevin just catching some more of that ceiling. And it's kind of been the theme of his round. He's just only been kind of getting a third down the fairway and really taking birdie out of the equation. Yeah, it's just another tough part about this course is if you're not getting clean off the tee, it's just an uphill battle the entire way like you just el completely eliminate your chance of getting birdies on these holes and just you know have to kind of do your best with what you've got kevin has done a pretty good job of that so far still being even par but at some point you know he's got to start hitting these fairways if he wants to score aaron gets up the hill probably about 25 from the basket and Gannon did this one of the previous rounds, too. Just very soft landing. Very important. Easy to go past the basket. Yeah, great touch on that approach. Great nose angle control to just land the disc nice and soft. Eliminate the ground play. Weak side putt there is going to 
Give Aaron just the part. Whoa. Yeah, it's almost well. close to spitting back out there for Kevin. Good par save for him. Yeah, Aaron has just been throwing the disc great today, giving himself opportunities. Just a couple putts here and there are just kind of holding him back. He could be making a push for the lead if if a few if those putts were a few inches in the other direction. But still a very solid round going, looking to keep it going on the par 3 12th, 563 feet, price 60 foot elevation drop. Power sidearm is the play or late turning backhand, very demanding shot and uh, very pro, definitely a textbook pro level par three out here at Olympus. And him pushing it a little straight, a little too long. Oh, wow. Aaron's, wow. Yeah. Maybe a good thing it caught those limbs at the end because that was just absolutely smoked. Would have found the backside rough if he kept going. This is kind of a common result here from Kevin. Doesn't quite get it pushing straight enough, so it comes up a bit short right, but it's still going to be out somewhere out in circle two. Jesse getting caught up. It's going to be a tricky approach. And he does it. Yeah, just barely misses that owl statue that <laughs> sits on the green here. A couple long birdie bids coming up from the rest of the card. See if anybody's able to connect from circle two. Oh, no. Oh, Aaron. Another weak side putt. And the first blemish the entire round for him. Yeah, again, just throwing the disc so well off the tee. But just the putting has been his kind of weak spot the past couple of years. The only thing really holding him back from getting that signature win I'm sure he knows it, but. Hole 13, a 468 foot par four. Most players are gonna opt for the forehand off the tee. Anywhere in this range is a great tee shot to set up the turnover forehand into the green. If you're not in the perfect spot though, it can get pretty tight as far as scrambling goes. So getting right off the tee shot is uh, paramount. Wow, that's the best one we've seen. I mean, honestly, it might be too good. Yeah, I was about to say, he probably might have even gone too right. Yeah. Kevin finds his own route over there as well. Yeah, especially with a Pro Tour field, like typically you see guys getting pretty aggressive on holes like this. I'm surprised we haven't seen more rollers and or like power flex backhands trying to get a little, you know, maybe an outside eagle look because it's definitely there. The, the fairway shapes for it, but... I guess these guys, you know, have gotten into this place by playing safe, playing within themselves. So no reason to change that for for one hole. And if you end up on the left here, it is not a good time. Aaron, really nice yeah. quick roller to get up and down over there. Should have a look for birdie. Yeah, really tricky spot here for Gannon. Like we said, kind of went too far there, but 
able to bite off enough off his drive that he probably had less than 200 feet into the green. Same thing for Kevin here. So it is definitely, uh, at this level, should be a, a near perfect up and down for there from there. Aaron with a nice correction on that putt. You know, he had, I will say, you know, the putting has been hit or miss for him this round, but hasn't really missed two putts in a row, which is uh, a good sign. Yeah, and we're on our way to a star frame as this was the easiest hole. About half a stroke under par, 50% of the field taking the birdie. So definitely a, a must get. Yeah, if there are any must gets on this course, that is one of them. Heading into hole 14, 764 foot par four. Looking to throw a right to left moving shot off the tee and then a left to right moving shot into the green. Kind of a common theme on this course. Got to have all the shot shapes and uh, multiple different styles of throw if you want to compete. Nice way to start things off from Gannon. Puts himself in that little ditch, uh, which is pretty much the perfect landing zone on that fairway. Great shot there from Kevin. Matching Gannon. We haven't seen too many backhands from Yessi so far this round, but pretty much all the ones we've seen, I have been thoroughly impressed. He's got a super smooth game on, uh, you know, throwing both spins. So uh, I don't know. I don't know why he doesn't break it out more often. I mean, with a forehand like that, it's <laughs> <laughs> definitely true. Uh, yeah, top five in the world, I would say. Yeah, definitely in terms of the control sidearm, very impressive to watch. Aaron just kind of pushes that drive a little too straight, catches the backside, sawgrass, not a fun lie, just kind of having to pitch out there. Ooh. Ooh. Little cheeky approach there from Gannon, almost catching the basket. Yeah, not a bad shot from Kevin as well. This, these sidearms from the ditch are playing about 360 to 370 feet into the green. Fairway shapes pretty well for that just force over forehand that you know with an overstable disc is going to come out at the end. Should be a stress-free birdie there for Yessi as well as Aaron needs to go mm. big up and over and still has some work there. Yeah, might not really have a putt depending on where his lie is behind that bushy tree. Go in. Yeah. Oh. oh! Drops it in. What a putt. Yeah, He's hyped. He loves it. I do love to see the emotion from Aaron, you know, like he's, he has the fist pumps. He's really good about that, you know, uh, you know, kind of keeping himself, uh, you know, with po a positive mindset and trying to be encouraging. So that was a, that was a big one to pick up, keep his, his momentum moving in the right direction. As we head into the 15th, the hole that Aaron has eagled both of the past two rounds, the par, the only par five on the course, 930 foot hole, very sharp downhill tee shot. Anything up in this range is fantastic to leave you at least one or maybe two shots into this green. It's a beautiful hole. You can see the t the, the basket from the tee box. Um, just an absolute, one of the t best holes on the entire course. This is the miss you don't want, though. If you just fade out a little early, you get caught up by those trees and it pinches your second shot. Takes eagle out of the equation, I would say. Mm -hmm. Birdie, still definitely there. That's such a great forehand. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, we, we mentioned it during round two. That patch of grass from the old tee pad is a, a pretty good marker to, to show what a what a, a good drive is. Anything past that is uh, is fantastic. These guys are blowing past it. So definitely in that eagle range if they want to get aggressive. 
if this stables up, it's going to be also just a yeah, fantastic shot from oh, Aaron yeah. and gets the ground play, the turbo booster. Making progress. Knows at this point, just takes his birdie and moves on. Yeah, that the pinch point. Oh, as Kevin finds the left side rough, that is not not great. But yeah, that pinch point that you see is probably about 280, 290 into the basket from there. So you know anything up in that area before your third shot is is just fine if you're playing for the birdie. Yes, he will have a long look for his eagle, about 100 feet or so. Aaron's going to have to make a highlight putt here to be three for three. Get out of that. Tough break there for Gannon. Just catches that sh bush in the ground. Probably cost him about 20 feet to skip. Going to have to earn it now. Pitch out territory there for Kiefer. Executes his fourth shot there. Can he make it three for three? Oh. Wow, what a good bid. Yeah, not a bad effort at all. Oh, oh and no. Gannon, heavy chains. Some surprising struggles on the card on the uh, the second easiest hole on the course. We had two Eagles again during round three, Garrett Gerthy and Simon Lazat. No surprises for those two names to be picking up the three on the 15th. Three holes to play, starting with hole 16, 737 foot, par four. Most players going to throw a turnover or maybe flexing backhand to land anywhere around this base of this hill. And you've got a nice 280 to 300 foot sidearm into the green. Pretty straightforward hole, but um, it's a, a tricky tee shot to get the stability right. Keep yourself in the middle of this fairway. Ooh. Wow, just barely hangs on. Tough sidearm to throw on this tee shot with that OB fence on the right hand side. Can get you into some trouble. This needs to stable up. That's looking like you can find some ob as well long i don't okay. think there's ob long on this hole but that does pinch off his access into the green i don't know if he can still play that traditional fairway he might have to go over the top we'll see That one, as soon as it flipped there, didn't really have a chance. Does have an outside chance to get up and down, but it's going to take like a 450 foot flex sidearm from there and just doesn't quite give it the turn that Kevin needed. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. He's looking at four in a row right now if he's yes he's able to knock down that putt good shot there from gannon as well grenade four. yeah i was wondering uh when aaron was going to bring out his uh inner colorado going up and over and looked like it was pretty successful yeah, should have some sort of luck. We'll see. Kevin's in a struggling here though to just wants to get off the hole at this point. Yeah, a little low ceiling spinner. Knocks it down. Seven down now for Aaron with a couple missed putts as well. 
Yeah, he's he is in the mix at this point, right? If he Aaron's able to finish birdie birdie, he puts himself in the conversation to to still win this tournament. Like as we've seen in the first two rounds, on hole seventeen and eighteen, anything is possible. So these leaders could very easily uh, slip up and um, you know give Aaron a chance to take this one down. First of those two holes here, seventeen five hundred eighty eight foot par four. You got to hit the gap. You have to clear this OB pond if you want a chance at the birdie. The second shot, if you're able to put it in the landing zone, is pretty straightforward, just kind of a low ceiling, 300-ish foot tunnel shot, but this tee shot is very demanding through a very tight gap, and uh, distance control is paramount. This needs to sit for Aaron, and... Oh no. Mm. Just barely leaks it long into the OB. That's good. Hold on. It's hard to know out of your hand if it's a good shot or not. Yeah. Kind of just hit the gap and hope that you get the green flag from the spotter because that landing zone is just so tight. It's leaking long too. Yeah, one of the harder tee shots on the course, I believe. CSA just goes big spike hyzer, left side. Pretty good result. Keep himself on the fairway. Big scramble here from Aaron. Needs to get up and down to save the par. That is a great first step. Puts himself about 15 feet, and Kevin just... Catches a limb. Not the day he wanted out here. Another birdie coming up there for Gannon. has to settle for another pitch out that's the thing about this course you know we've been saying it all three rounds of just the rough is in some spots is just so thick that it really limits your options and you know if you're off by five feet from where you'd like to be it's just just a bit low there for yesy but yeah it just it can uh really inflate your scores very quickly out here Ooh. a little high but Still able to save the par. So this hole came in quarter stroke over par, so one of the more challenging holes, and we can definitely see why. Yeah, the big numbers come up quick if you're just a little off. Especially with that OB long around the green as well, so you can't just pump one on your second shot. Heading into hole 18, the final hole the chess.com invitational here in 2024 a par four 680 feet beautiful downhill tee shot looking to put it anywhere in bounds gives you a chance to put yourself on this island green and get a chance at the birdie a lot of players are going to opt for this forehand into the blind landing zone on the right hand side of that first island beautiful shot from Gannon puts himself right where he needs to be Aaron's looks like his is going to be fine as well. Yeah, I was surprised we didn't see more of these forehands on the first two days. I think it's, this is kind of pushing a bit straight, needs to get down. Oh yeah, just barely hangs on. But, you know, it is a blind landing zone, so it is tricky, but there's plenty of space over there on the right-hand side, and you can really just kind of power on a overstable disc knowing that it'll fade over into that landing zone. Four great shots, though. I think this is the first time all week we've seen four guys inbounds on the tee shot. Yeah, and this hole came in uh, under par after being over par for the past couple rounds. As Kevin, the damages just continue. 
think it's safe to say the uh, players figured it out here final day. Aaron inside the circle. Yeah, that's just a massive yeah. spike hyzer there. Gannon getting technical. Nice backhand shot from him. Mirrored with uh, Aaron there. That's going to settle up. A little long. Just a bit short to save the par there from Kevin. Going to round out his day with another bogey. Yes, say for the birdie, just a bit off as well. Cannon, though, all three rounds put up fire scores on these back nines. Roller coaster there on the front nines, and it's going to finish in fourth place this tournament. Great showing from him with the new sponsor and the new plastic. He'll be a competitor all season long. The story of this round, Aaron Gossage, eight under. It's the lowest score we've seen all week. Yeah, that'll be a course record. Puts him into solo third place, as we'll see here in just a second on the final leaderboard. Yeah, Nathan, as you mentioned, eight down, course record with a bogey. Couple missed putts. Really fire out there from Gossage. Anthony Barella taking down his first Disc Golf Pro Tour win. Ricky Waisaki always finding himself near the top of the leaderboard. Just a lot of young talent here in this top 20. And a tough course. Six down puts you in the top 20. You don't see that much on the Disc Golf Pro Tour anymore. Yep. Thank you, Nathan, for joining me for this coverage. Being here, subbing in for Andrew Fish and Nathan Queen. We're excited to see you in Waco for the next Disc Golf Pro Tour stop. We'll see you then.